Well, hello again, everyone. Today is a very brief overview to sequences, which we've talked about in class before, and linear intervallic progressions. Just a very brief introduction. We'll actually drill down a little farther in class, but I just want to get the concept out there. So this is an excerpt uh, from the song Fly Me to the Moon. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you know it well. Let's listen to it. And this is a very square finale-based performance, but that's okay. Let's do a real quick dirty Roman numeral analysis of this. We're in the key of C minor. Start with a one chord. And uh, what chord is this? That well, looks like an F minor, basically. We'll normalize everything out to just try it as much as possible. And we have a subtonic. And we have a three chord. Six chord, a two, oops, wrong button, that's okay, two half diminished seven, and because we are the sort of people that worry about these things, let's at least make it look right. And then we go on to a five seven, and then back to a one. All right, so harmonically speaking, this is what kind of progression? It's correct, a descending fifth or circle progression. We go down by a perfect fifth every time until we get to the six to two, in which case we go down a tritone and that allows us to stay in the right key. Now melodically speaking, we have something else going on here. So let's, let's file these things away here. Harmonically, we have a fifth progression, sometimes referred to as a circle progression. Uh, this is a descending fifth harmonic sequence. Of course, a sequence is a repeated idea at a different pitch level. Even though the notes aren't exactly the same as we keep going through, I did that just to make the bass line a little more interesting. Overall, everything is moving down by the fifth. Now up here in the melody, we have this much, a descending uh, pentachord. Fly me to the moon. And that idea is in, let me play among the stars, repeat it over here, let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. Yeah, I'm sorry to subject you to my singing, but there's really no way around at this point. So this melodic idea, which goes to the downbeat and maybe a beat and a half, two beats into the second measure, is repeated at a different pitch level every time. How far down is it moving every two two bars. That's right, it's moving down a diatonic steps, in this case a half step, a whole step, and then a modified thing, which technically the first one moves down a half step, but everything else seems to move down a, whatever it is in the key. Because we're in a minor key, we have to have the dominant with the leading tone, so we had to raise the B flat to a B there. It makes perfect sense musically within its context. But overall, we're talking about a stepwise sequence. So the sequenced idea melodically is right here, and it's stepwise. And then the harmonic sequence is descending fifth. And these two things work together to create the sound that we know here. Now, linear intervallic patterns. Basically, that means you take the important structural pitches of each simultaneity and figure out the distances between them. So C to E flat, contrapuntally speaking, how far is it from C to E flat? A tenth, you might say a third. And then the chord changes here, what's the distance between F and A flat? Also a tenth. B flat to D, uh-huh. E flat to G. And I'll bet if you looked at C to A flat to C, D to F, G to B, C D flat, you get the same thing. So we refer to this as a 10, 10, 10 linear valic pattern. 
there are other types, but I just wanted to introduce these this way. A 10 10 10 lip simply means that every downbeat or every structurally important point, there is a tenth between the two voices in question. I guess in this case, there are only two voices, or tenths between a bass and a soprano. So, tenth here, tenth here, tenth here, tenth here, so forth and so on. Some of the other LIPs we'll see are 10 7 or 7 10 lips, 10 8 or 8 10, 5 8, 5 10. Uh, one of the things that we'll look at when we look at lips in class is the fact that you know all these bass notes are roots of chords. All these chords are root position. If you have chords in something other than root position, you'll get a different linear intervallic pattern. And we'll drill down on that a little further. But I just wanted to get this out there. It's a very brief introduction. We'll, we'll go down more of, the, more of this path in class, but this is your entree into this next idea. So, as always, if you have any questions, please track me down. Thanks, as always, for watching, and have a great day.